Welcome to the show. Wayne Allen Rude, worn out. Welcome aboard Newsmax TV. Our last hour on USA Radio Network. Third hour of USA is always our first hour on Newsmax TV, and we love being on. And we love all the letters you keep sending telling us that we got to expand this show on Newsmax TV as well. I hope Newsmax TV is getting that message loud and clear. Everybody wants two hours on Newsmax TV so I can take callers all around the country. The line's already filled. Everybody wants to get on. Wayne Allen Rude, War Now. Your relentless Trump warrior, relentless conservative warrior, relentless middle class warrior, capitalist evangelist, and most importantly, American made and proud of it. You only find war in the United States of America. America first, America second, America third, America forever, America infinity. That's what I believe. The rest of the world doesn't matter. The only job of an American president is to take care of America, and that's why Donald Trump is doing a great job. Speaking of Donald Trump, he was in my town today. A lot of people expected me to be on the stage with him, but Donald Trump did only one thing today. He wanted to meet with victims and first responders. He wanted to meet with the police heroes of Las Vegas, Nevada, and this terrible mass murder attack. And he did that. He sped from the airport to the hospital. He went room to room to meet all the people that were injured badly and are still in the hospital. I've got photos of him with those people. He really did do it. Uh, He really is a great guy. He really is a caring guy. And then he sped to police headquarters in Las Vegas where he actually met with all the heroes. And then he had a press conference with those heroes. And he did a fantastic job. Thank you, Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, Commander-in-Chief, and uh, all-around great guy and great leader. Uh, You know, something I said earlier in the show, on the radio show, I want to mention on national TV, on Newsmax TV. When I watched TV on Monday morning, right after the shooting, I thought he wanted to get up to the podium and say something. You've got nothing to do with this. This is why people hate politicians. Every politician in Washington rushed home and in Carson City, Nevada, rushed home to Las Vegas to be on the TV, to stand there solemnly and talk about what a terrible day it is. What have you got to do with the day? There's nothing that a congressman or woman has to do with a terrible terrorist attack and a tragedy. You're all BS artists. And you're all whores. What you are is publicity whores. You wanted to get in front of a camera to get name recognition so you could get reelected. You're like stepping over the bodies of dead people to get reelected. That's the honest truth of why you were all there on that podium. And then today, they're standing on the podium with the President of the United States. Now, thank God he didn't name because I can't stand her. And we also had our governor who hates Trump, Sandoval, never never raised a finger for him. Our senator who hates Trump. Senator uh, Dean Heller, who literally sat on his hands and wanted Trump to lose the state of Nevada, Republican senator, Republican governor against the president of the United States. And then when the time comes, they want to stand next to him. Why? Because everyone looks good standing next to the president of the United States. It helps you get reelected. It helps you win over fans. It helps you raise money. You're an important person. You're a leader. It's you and the president in a terrible moment. I'm sure, you know, this isn't a Nevada thing. I'm sure every politician in Texas stood next to Trump when he came to visit for Harvey. And in Florida, when Irma hit, every politician in Florida stood next to Trump. And in Puerto Rico, every important politician stood next to Trump. It was the governor of Puerto Rico, and it was all the top officials, and it was the mayor of San Juan who hates him so badly. They all stood next to Donald Trump. Because when you stand next to the president, you're in a person of action. You're the most important person in the world along with the president. And you're a friend of the president. You shake hands and that's the moment you got the money shot to put on your wall for the rest of your life and to put on the front page of the newspaper. Folks, this is the problem with the United States of America and every country in the world. Politicians are whores. Can you admit that? I'm like Trump. I just let it fly. I say it like it is and I tell you the truth. Politicians are whores and all they care about is publicity and themselves and their egos. They don't care about you. The cops are heroes. These guys stood up and directed people and and literally helped wounded people and picked them up while shots were coming at them. Everybody else was diving for cover. What were the cops doing? They weren't diving. They were standing. And other cops were making attempts to enter the Mandalay Bay and get to where the shooter was and get to his room. My God, the heroes, the balls on these guys. And what do they get? Nothing. And the politician who does nothing stands up there in a bad moment and acts like a big shot. What a joke. What an absurd joke. Everyone up on that dais but Donald Trump, no one deserved to be there. 
with the president. You all hate the president. Heller hates him. Sandoval hates him. All the senators and, and congressmen on that stage that are Democrats hate him even more than the two Republican establishment rhinos. And yet you stood on stage because you craved national television spotlight. There it is. That's politics. That's the D.C. swamp. That's what's going on. All right, let me give you uh, a couple of things that I think prove that something much more happened in this terror attack than people claim. Number one, a 64-year-old man became Rambo overnight who had never done anything strenuous physically in his entire life. You have no idea. They tell me that the windows at Mandalay Bay can withstand hundreds of miles per hour of hurricane winds, and he managed to smash through the windows and set up a, a freaking machine gun with a belt feeder, and he managed to shoot it out that window like he's Rambo. Sly Stallone in Rambo with the rippling muscles taking steroids. This guy was a 64-year-old retired uh, a gambler in Las Vegas casinos who played video poker. Are you kidding me? How did he do that? How did he become Rambo? How did he learn? Someone had to teach him how to do all this or someone had to be with him. He wasn't alone. One of those two is the answer. There were other shooters or there was a team planning it and funding it and coordinating it and executing it. But he wasn't alone. Uh, either they taught him or he wasn't alone or both. So that's number one mystery. Number two, here's a fact that I got. I've been getting texts all day today from my buddy. And my buddy knows the specific host at Mandalay Bay that was the high roller host for Stephen Paddock, the killer, the mass murdering deranged killer. And he says this guy just a couple days before the disaster won $100,000 in the casino. And instead of keeping the money, he paid off his marker. Do you understand what that means? He owed the casino a hundred grand and he took his winnings and paid the casino the hundred grand. So he no longer owed anything. Does that sound like a man who's about to commit suicide? No, it doesn't. If you were going to commit suicide, you'd say, screw the casino. You'd keep the hundred grand. You'd still owe them the money. Matter of fact, you'd run up a million dollar debt. What do you care? You're about to be dead. You're never going to pay them. You'd never pay them off. This is a guy who was going to leave the country after this was done. He wasn't planning to commit suicide. So that leads me to believe somebody killed him. He didn't commit suicide. He was in that room for 72 minutes before the police breached the room. From the time of the shooting, the shooting was about 10 minutes long. And he knocked off almost 600 people wounded and killed in 10 minutes. And then for another 60 minutes, the police planned how they were going to get up there and get him. He had all that time alone in the room and he killed himself. When they broke in the door, they said he was dead. Well, guess what? He may have done it any time during that hour. It wasn't one minute before. So the, the end result is here's a guy that they claim killed himself. How do you know that somewhere 10 minutes in, somebody didn't shoot him who was working with him? And therefore, he'd be the only loose link and the only witness to the entire planning of the entire event. Sounds to me like an ISIS-type organization killed the patsy. You know, I, I'm, of course, I think he was the shooter. There may have been another shooter. I know a lot of people convinced there were multiple shooters, but forget all that. Even if he was the only shooter, he needed help to pull this off. And so a guy who's going to do this doesn't pay off his marker. He doesn't pay the casino $100,000 with his winnings. He keeps the $100,000 winnings. He keeps the money he owes, and he leaves the country. This guy wasn't planning to commit suicide. The story doesn't make sense. But what makes sense is he didn't kill himself. He was killed in the room by someone else who was participating in the entire event. And that could very well have been ISIS. Okay? Number three. Somebody made a fortune, and my buddy's going to be calling into this show in about 10 minutes to talk about the fact that somebody was buying gun stocks, knowing that after a terror attack, gun stocks would go up after what appeared to be the worst mass murder in American history and some sort of a terrorist act. Gun stocks would undoubtedly go up when people would be scared and rush to the store and buy guns, just like after 9-11. We found out that in, in, in advance of 9-11, some group of individual investors made a fortune and sold the stock market short before 9-11. They made a fortune. Can you explain how that happened? Who would have done it? It would have been Osama bin Laden's organization, which quietly and discreetly made hundreds of millions of dollars in advance of 9-11 knowing it was coming. Well, someone must have known this was coming because 
gun stocks have been in the toilet and someone's buying, buying, buying and suddenly gun stocks started soaring and then they made a fortune on Monday after this happened. And guess what else happened? MGM stock was hurling downward towards the toilet in the days before this event and they made a, made a fortune on gun stocks going up and MGM stocks going down. Somebody knew. That wasn't Stephen Paddock. That was an organization, an organization like ISIS. They've done it before. Islamic extremists made a fortune in advance of 9-11. All of these things lead me to believe Stephen Paddock was not in this alone, and most probably it was Islamic terrorism. I continue to believe that, and we'll find out in the next few days. But Kip Herridge will come on, uh, economic expert, to talk about how someone would have made a fortune in the days before this terror event. Wayne Alaroot, War Now. Welcome back. Uh, third hour of USA Radio Network. First hour of Newsmax TV. Channel 349 Direct TV. Also on cable carriers around the country. And if we're not on your cable carrier and you're listening on USA, you want to get me on TV, you got to call your cable carrier, whoever carries you locally, like in Las Vegas, here where I am, it's Cox Cable. You got to call them and say, I want my Wayne Allen route. You got to get Newsmax TV on your cable dial, Cox. And you do the same thing everywhere in the United States. Tell them you want your Wayne Allen route. You got to get your Newsmax TV. And if you're watching on TV and you're not getting me on radio three hours a day, you got to go ahead and call your local conservative talk radio station and say, I want Wayne Allen Root. War now, the Wayne Allen Root show from uh, 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 6 Pacific on my channel right here. Go get it. Call USA Radio and make the arrangements. And if, until that happens, go to usaradio.com to listen there or to listen to old segments as well. It's all at usaradio.com and newsmaxtv.com. All right, American Made, Wayne Alaroot. And I've got all kinds of problems with this story and the facts we're being given about the shooter, Stephen Paddock. And uh, we've got a guest on, Kip Perridge, who uh, is an economic expert and he's got his own stock newsletter, investment newsletter that's made a fortune over the last few years. And it's up over 40% this year. This is a smart guy. This is a numbers guy. I've never been a numbers guy. This is a guy who studied in school when I was out having a good time. He was studying late at night. Numbers. I've never done that in my life. He knows numbers. I'll call him the wizard of odds, the wizard of numbers, like no one I've ever seen. And he thinks he's found a pattern that would indicate this is an ISIS-like attack because a large multinational organization must have made hundreds of millions of dollars buying gun stocks in anticipation of this terror attack and maybe even shorting MGM International Resorts International stock in anticipation of this attack. So without further ado, Kip Herridge of VRAinsider.com. Hey, Kip, how are you? Hey, Wayne, doing great. Thanks for having me on. So um, your theory is, you, you well, forget a theory, you've seen the numbers and the numbers say somebody made a lot of money on gun stocks in anticipation of this terror attack, correct? Yeah, someone certainly did. And, and, and by the way, thoughts and prayers to everyone there in Las Vegas uh, as you're going through this really tough Thank time. You. But Wayne, there's no question about it. Um, you know, I do trend. I'm, I'm a trend following investor. I specialize in pattern recognition. And that's what my system of 32 years is built on. And I have a special interest in this particular kind of special event, if you will, extraordinary event like we just had uh, since 9 11, because I followed that closely. We wrote about it often. And someone made, I forget the exact number, but the, the trail, according to the SEC, went cold just after they discovered that somebody made well over $100 million buying put options in the two airlines that were in, in, uh, involved. That was uh, American and, and United. Correct. And um, since then, you know, when things like this happen, we, we, we check our systems. And so um, the gun stocks started popping up on my radar about a week ago because they had moved quite a bit. And so I started looking into this uh, after the attack on Sunday, and I uh, was pretty, pretty stunned by what I found. Uh, the two major U.S. gun manufacturers are uh, Smith & Wesson. It's got a new company name, but that's what anybody knows by, and uh, Sturm Ruger. And just for simple math, I'll just lay it out to you. In the last 11 to 12 trading sessions, somebody's been acquiring the stock at a more rapid rate. The volume has been about double the normal volume. 
Also during that time, both stocks, by the time the market opened on Monday, both stocks went up exactly 22% from the lows of 11 trading days ago to the open on Monday. So the, all this money was made in 11 days, right in anticipation, right in advance of this horrendous mass murder terror attack in Vegas. Now, you know Stephen Paddock isn't the guy who did it because he's dead. He committed suicide, or so the police say. But either way, murder or suicide, he's dead. He's not the one who made the money. But some giant organization might have had the wherewithal to put up tens of millions of dollars and turn it into a hundred million or two hundred million dollars, right? Whoever whoever was behind this, this is what they would have done if they wanted to profit from it. So obviously we don't know the answer to that, but I can tell you I'm not a big believer in, in coincidences. And after watching what happened at nine eleven, seeing that factually it's not conspiracy theory, factually more than a hundred million dollars was, was made and put options on the two airlines that struck the towers in the Pentagon and in Pittsburgh, or uh, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, hey, Kip, documented. Kip, hang on. I want to just grab the tail yeah. end of this conversation. After the break, we're talking to Kip Herridge, an economic expert. He's got a company called VRAinsider.com, and he knows everything about numbers. He's a stock newsletter guy, and he stares at numbers on his computer screen all day, and he's identified something really powerful that may have happened. I want to talk about MGM stock, which was hit by this, when we get back on the other side, then we'll take all your calls at 844 one 927 6691 Wayne Allen Roof, Warn Out. All right, Wayne Allen Roof, Warn Out on uh, USA Radio Network, Newsmax Television. Great to have you with us. Lots of callers lined up. We'll take more. 844 now one I wanted to continue my conversation with Kip Herridge, uh, VRA Insider, because he's got explosive information. These are just guesses, but somebody made a fortune in advance of the terror attack. I guess you can't definitively, uh, definitively say, Kip Herridge, that, uh, you know, People didn't just, I mean, stocks go up and stocks go down. And maybe there was a rally in gun stocks that just happened to start 11 days before this terror attack, right? It is possible that it's as simple an answer as that, correct? Yeah, it's not as clear cut in my mind, just being candid about it. It's not as clear cut as 9-11 with put options on the two airlines. So that was really clear cut. Uh, but it's very interesting to me. And again, if, you're, if people are wondering, well, why would the gun stocks go up? Why, why are those the ones they want to buy? I mean... You know, for, for this country to change its policy on gun control in the Second Amendment, it's going to take something like you've got to rally the country, and you've got to have like a, a new Pearl Harbor, uh, but for the Second Amendment. And it takes something powerful. You know, the question is, yeah. is this event – by the way, if that's the case, take it a step further, Wayne, like 9-11, the Patriot Act was written before 9-11. So if, if we just keep following the money here, <laughs> if – there's an attack on the Second Amendment, you can bet that that legislation and that uh, uh, new policy is already written. So I think we can keep following these gun stocks to see. But well, wait, the Kip, there's two, there's two things. How you make money on it. Kip, there's two things. There's two ways to, two reasons why you'd make money on gun stocks if there's a terrible terror attack, the worst one in history. Number one, you'd make money because when people are scared, they immediately react by going to buy guns. That's just a fact of life. People bought a lot of guns after 9-11 too. When they're scared, they buy guns. And number two, if there's going to be a terrible terror attack using automatic weapons, large weapons, then any idiot could figure out it's going to lead to Democrats screaming for gun control and legislation that will limit your right to purchase big guns and powerful guns. And so everyone's going to run out and buy big guns and powerful guns. This work throughout the history of America. Anytime there's a, a question about gun control and people screaming for it, everybody goes out to buy all the very guns they think will get banned. So obviously you'd make money owning gun, stock, uh, gun stocks in anticipation of that. My reason it's I held the, you... Oh, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Shoot. I was going to say it's the one group. If you are a planner of this, either ISIS or it's a false flag, if you're the planner of this, it is the one group that you would purchase. There is no other group that you would purchase. And by the way, they also shorted apparently MGM because MGM lost uh, 10 to 11 percent in the days leading up to the attacks as well. And, and so I assume lost the, more on Monday. I'm rate. assuming went down even further on Monday. Yeah. I think it lost it, a billion it, dollars right. on Monday, didn't it? Uh, as far as total market value it lost, I don't know. I just know the percentage wise. So they got hit at the pair trade, by the way. You short one, and you buy another. And one thing we haven't talked about, Wayne, is 
There also was a, a large number of call option purchases on both Smith & Wesson, now American Outdoor Brands, and Storm Ruger. So and, and what's, the, what's, the significance, volume, what's the significance of that? You make more leverage, you make even more money on a call than you would just buying the stock directly? Exactly. Uh, and you, you probably do both, but maybe, hmm. you know, who knows what they did. But, you know, I, the, the simple math that I've done in the last couple of hours on this, when I knew you were going to have me on, uh, is that I see probably it wasn't like 9/11, I, but I, it looks to me like somebody made 15 to 20 million dollars uh, on on this on this attack. On the gun stocks going up, and what about you mentioned the volume was double on the gun stocks leading into the attack. What was the volume like on MGM going down? Was it bigger than usual? Uh, I did not check that, but I definitely noticed about a doubling in the average volume for the 11 to 12 trading sessions leading up to uh, Sunday. All right. And, and by the way, you didn't check, but I checked on the actual dollar value of MGM's loss the day after. And it was in the Vegas paper that they lost a billion dollars in market value in one day. So if you happen to have been smart enough to short MGM because you knew a terror attack was coming because you're ISIS and you backed the guy, you would have made a fortune on both the gun stocks going up and MGM going down. It's very possible that that happened. But we don't know. You can't prove this. And even, listen, the, the president of USA Radio, Fred Weinberg, came on my show today after you, and he said, well, I don't think you could get away with that because the SEC keeps very close track of all big purchases, and they would be able, they'd see a paper trail, and they'd be able to catch you. What's your response to that, Kip? It's very, very possible. They do a great job on, on exactly that, auditing the paper trail. They should certainly be able to find it. After, uh, after the fact. That, but you could be long gone well, at that point, right? Well, that's... That's where. That's why the the troll went cold after 9/11 with the, all the money made there on the on the put options for airlines. Uh, the SEC traced it all the way up until a point they couldn't go any further. So that tells you the money is, was probably invested through an international, you know, uh, country that <laughs> that doesn't allow us to uh, find their paperwork. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I got it. All right, Kip Herridge, VRA Insiders, his company, and we appreciate all the math and all the brilliant legwork. And maybe this is something that the FBI ought to be investigating. Maybe they're going to give you a call, Kip, and, and check out your math and find out your brilliant theory. Because someone made a fortune on this event, highly likely, not a sure thing, but we think someone made a fortune heading into this event. And therefore, that alone could show this is the earmarks of an ISIS attack, not a lone wolf and I have so many texts from smart guys and police detectives and cops who watch my show. Every one of them says, Wayne, this guy did not go from a 64-year-old retired accountant to Rambo overnight. Do you know how hard it is to break that window in his hotel room? That window's 800 pounds. How did he break the window unless he's a, a SWAT guy, unless he's a Navy SEAL with Navy SEAL training, or unless he had lots of help and lots of planning and lots of coordination, and he himself had lots of training in the last few months. And if he had lots of training Wait, in the I last few months, then how come his girlfriend didn't know about it? So all of this makes no sense. Maybe the girlfriend's in on it. Maybe she got the 100000 in the Philippines because she helped him. Who knows what it was? Hey, did you hear, Kip, that someone texted me, a good friend of mine, very good friend, he knows the casino high-rolling host who took care of this guy. And he says this guy made $100,000 gambling and immediately paid off his marker. Nobody, knowing you're going to commit suicide and your life's going to end the next two days, has ever paid off a marker. You'd keep the money. It makes no sense. He didn't know he was going to commit suicide. Somebody must have killed him. This was not suicide. I have the same questions everybody else has. My two primary questions would be this. We know where he fired from, apparently, because the windows were busted out. But where was the muzzle flash? I, I know that you can put a suppressor on it, but still in a dark room in a dark night from up there, you're going to have that room lighting up like crazy. I didn't see a single one of those. Uh, from the 32nd floor in the videos I saw. And the other thing is, in the picture they provided, you can see there's a suicide note there. At least there's a note written, and he's got like a thing of uh, scotch tape on top of it to hold it down. Mm -hmm. I guess we knew when he busted the window, he go flying off, it. right? <clears throat> and then, you know, I want to know what that said, and I want to find out why didn't we see muzzle flashes. That, and, and, and as, Kim, a hunter, as a hunter, that's bizarre to me. Well, and not only is there a suicide note or a note, but there's also a video. He videotaped himself 
pulling right. off this act. We want to see the video. The United States citizens deserve to see that video. Did he say anything about the video pledging allegiance to ISIS or any extreme organization, Antifa or Al Qaeda, or you name the Islamic extremist organization? I'd like to see that video and see what went on and also see how a 64 year old out of shape, retired man who'd never worked out in Navy SEAL training in his life was able to break an 800 pound window and carry a gigantic gun that probably was a belt fed machine gun. How could he have done that? Makes no sense. Nothing does. Hey, Kip, thanks for the call. Biggest- really appreciate it. Smart guy, Kip Perridge, VRA insider. Smart guy. Let's take uh, Anthony in California on line one. He's been waiting patiently for over an hour. Anthony, you're on with Wayne Root. How are you? Yeah, uh, Wayne, uh, my question is, if I was in a suite, they would kick me out in a half a day if I wasn't down on the floor. I know you said he won 100000 on Friday. Are you telling me he was up there for two days not gambling? Well, listen, I'll, I'll get back to you on that one. I don't know the answer to that. In other words, if you win a hundred grand and you're up a hundred grand, you pay off your marker, will they allow you to just stay in the suite for two days and not gamble? I don't know. I'll check on that one. I now have the name of his casino host and I'm going to find out from this guy. I'm going to try and get him on the show and answer some of these questions because my buddy, uh, by the way, is a huge gambler in this town and a very wealthy man. And he told me, not the person who knows the host, but another friend told me there's no way he could have gotten that room. That's the best suite in the entire Mandalay Bay unless he was gambling millions. But sometimes they gamble the first day and they, they probably don't gamble the next day. That Kip goes on every national TV show around in the next few days. This, we got to find if, the, if these are, you know, uh, Islamists that made this or these are Americans that made this. We need to, we need to ferret these people out and find right. out. That would be... Before everything else, that would be the first thing to do now that I know that is in, uh, that's very impressive. This guy, uh, Kip Harris, is one wonderful uh, person that you have on here. He knows his I, numbers like no one I've ever seen. And he knows the numbers that happened before 9-11. Some, some group made $100 million plus before 9-11 by gambling on selling the stock market short, specifically the two airlines, American and United, that were involved in the crashes. Brilliant move. Horrible, evil move but a brilliant move, and now somebody made a fortune, it sounds like, on gun stocks leading up to this, and maybe a fortune selling short MGM as well. So we'll see. Uh, We'll find out. But Kip put that idea out there, and now I'm going to write about it, and let's see if the FBI is interested in seconds. All right, Uh, we got more callers. Jeff in Vegas, Michael of Pennsylvania, Robert. We'll get to all of you when we get back. Wayne Allerud, War Now, will take more calls. we got a line open, 844-WAR-NOW-1. Oh, it just got filled, but hopefully one will drop off. 844-WAR-NOW-1. We'll be right back. USA Radio, Newsmax TV. Let's go to war! here you don't find in any other show in America. I don't care if it's the biggest show on Fox News. No one has the stock expert like Kip Herridge that could tell you about gun stocks going up and MGM going down their stock in anticipation in the days in advance of this event. We also can't find someone because I'm friends with everyone in Las Vegas. Uh, I knew all the cops. I knew what was happening on the ground when no one else knew during the event. And now I know what's happening after the event because I've got Uh, insider access to someone who knows best friends with the casino host for Steven Paddock, the killer, the shooter. And the story just keeps getting weirder. This guy Paddock requested room 235 on the 32nd floor. And he requested it three weeks ago. And he asked again and again, he begged for room 235. And he was put in room 135. He was asked if he wanted to be moved after that. And they would try and open up room 235 and he said nope uh i'll take 135 i'm happy with it he says that uh, i mean it's just a weird story so we originally wanted 235 couldn't get it the host puts him in 135 same floor exact opposite wing either room still has good vantage points of the concert and he probably got to 135 and realized it was an even better angle to shoot from No one knows any of this yet. You're the first one in the country to talk about this on national TV. He also says to me, the shooter had no exit strategy. He stockpiles all those guns, all that ammo, all those explosives and cameras, and then he would just commit suicide and shoot himself? You gotta be kidding me. 
Why would he do all that planning and then just blow up the entire wing of the hotel and take all the cops and all the people with him? Why would he just go out that easy and not do any more damage if he's a psychotic madman or an ISIS guy or anything? It's all a strange story. A lot of questions are not answered on this one. Uh, I'm Wayne Alarude, Warren Al, the Wayne Alarude Show, if you haven't figured it out. We're going to take a bunch more calls. I wanted to mention a couple things first. Uh, healthcare rates. The New York Times says healthcare rates could rise 50% in the next year. So here we are talking about a mass murder. We're talking about the NFL and players kneeling. We're talking about North Korea. And we're, we're not, we're distracted. We're not focusing on health care. Why didn't Congress overhaul or repeal Obamacare when health care rates are going to go up 50%? Trump's record in cutting regulations better than Reagan's. He's cut more regulations than any president at this point in history. Great news for Donald Trump. Uh, the market up again today, the stock market, it's up 4,300 points since the election, nearly 24%. It's the greatest stock market rally in history. And finally, the House Homeland Security Committee approves billions of dollars to fund Donald Trump's border wall. That happened today. All we heard in the news, it can't happen, it won't happen, it'll never happen. It's happening. Trump didn't give up on the wall. The wall is happening. Thank you, President Trump. And I hope all of you appreciate all the news I'm giving you on the fly from people in the know, the best stock experts, the best law enforcement experts, and uh, even the guy who knows best friends, he gave me his name, of the casino host at Mandalay Bay that's dealt with this guy, Stephen Paddock, for three years and has the full story of, of exactly what room he wanted, what room he got, and the fact that he won $100,000 on a, a play in slots in just the day before and paid off his marker. Folks, nobody committing suicide pays off their marker and make sure they're even with the casino. Just keep the money. Don't pay the marker. He didn't know he was going to be committing suicide. He didn't know that was the last day of his life. Weird story. There's more to this story. There's other shooters. There's other planners. And the stock's going up in advance and down in advance. Someone making money. Sounds to me like a coordinated Islamic terror attack. Sounds to me like ISIS in advance or Al-Qaeda in advance of a major terror attack. And they're so smart, they've even got stockbrokers and they buy and sell stocks. Amazing. Uh, we've got uh, Jeff in Vegas, line two. He wants to know about paying off the marker. Jeff, you're on with Wayne Alarud. How are you? Wayne, great. Uh, for the rest of the country, Dallas and the rest of you, this is really how he is. He's, he's the real uh, McCoy. Hey, I'm not a conspiracy guy. Hey, Jeff, you got to talk into the phone. I'm having trouble hearing you. Jeff, I cannot hear you. Get off speakerphone. Okay, Get on the phone. Can, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? A, li a little better. Go ahead. Shoot. All right. I'm right into the phone. Hey, I'm not a conspiracy guy. The fourth floor uh, flashes. Uh, Jeff, you... Jeff, my listeners can't hear you. you. You can't be on a speakerphone on my show. Jeff, you're gone. Marie in New Jersey, line one. Marie, you're on with Wayne Root. Got about 30 seconds. Shoot. Thanks a lot. My message is to um, Mark Anthony, a celebrity that disrespected the president. Uh, what, what did he do? I don't know what Mark Anthony did. Uh, he, I used uh, uh, the F word uh, for him to shut the F up about the NFL. Mark Anthony, um, he disrespected our president of the United States. Um, he's a poor example of a Puerto Rican and American. I don't think that he should be allowed to perform in this country or to be called an American. Anyway, he belongs to the Independent Party in Puerto Rico, the party that de Blasio honored the terrorists in, 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 uh, in New York. He also disrespected the president on February 7th. 2016. Hey, Marie, we've we got to run. i got to cut you short. I want to let you on. You call a lot. Regular caller. Got in your point. we got to go. Seconds to go. you got some late-breaking news here on the show. Lots of hot news. Fastest 60 minutes in all of television history. War now. The Wayne Allen Root Show. All the first responders, all the cops, your heroes. You're the best. We pray for you. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow. You be safe tomorrow. Out. <laughs>